lectures and stuff, I thought I'd uh, hit one more point that I think uh, I sort of didn't talk about enough and that you might be interested in. And so the basic thought is, uh, look, why did we bother reading Aristotle? Or in other words, uh, did I just waste your time? Because if you think about uh, Aristotle and two of the big problems that you might have with his ethics, one is that the whole thing rests on this notion that there's a sort of characteristic activity of humans, and that is the activity of reason, and the activity of the soul in accordance with reason, and the sort of thing that we are is how we determine uh, what is good and bad for humans and stuff. And you might think, look, there's just, that's not how it works, Aristotle. Humans don't have uh, like a purpose or a goal. Like eudaimonia is not uh, the sort of thing that humans are meant for. Humans are not meant for anything. We know this because of evolution. So Darwin came along and showed us that creatures don't exist sort of with purposes or with characteristic activities or something. Uh, creatures just sort of evolve over time effectively randomly, uh, driven by natural selection and the environments that they're in. So uh, in other words, Aristotle's teleology, which is the idea that things have sort of uh, purposes or ends or goals or causes or something that might apply to objects that we create. So the purpose of a knife is to cut. So maybe there's sort of a good knife is a sharp one. And maybe it applies to like things that we do for reasons. So like a good flute player maybe plays the flute in certain ways, but it doesn't apply to a species or something like this. So it doesn't apply to humans as a whole. So we're wasting our time on Aristotle because of that. And second, as you notice, he's very elitist. He thinks uh, like virtue is something that, uh, at least for some virtues, you have to be rich. So uh, magnificence, you have to be rich. Uh, he thinks you have to be brought up well to be a virtuous person, uh, things like this. So he has a very elitist strain in his thinking. And you might think, well, that's got to be wrong. So this is just a bad ethical system. And so basically this video is about, uh, you know, did I just waste your time having you read this guy? So we'll start with the first topic, so teleology. So the idea that humans have a characteristic activity and it's uh, the activity of the soul in accordance with reason. And from here we can determine eudaimonia and all the virtues and stuff. So there's sort of three answers to did I waste your time? Yes, maybe yes, and no. So yes, we've already heard. So look, Darwin came along and showed that this is false. And that's not like a crazy view to take. Some people think anything that looks like Aristotle's virtue ethics, it's just over for that. Like it's over once you accept evolution and the source of life on earth. So there's just no hope for an ethical theory like this. This kills not just Aristotle's ethical systems, but a lot of religious ethical systems look very similar to Aristotle when it comes to this sort of thing. They say humans were created by a divinity or by a bunch of divinities in a certain way. And because of the way we were created, this is what it says about ethics. And you might think this is all a waste of time. Humans weren't created by anything. Humans evolved like everything else. And there's no ethical conclusions you can draw from the fact that we evolved because evolution doesn't give us a purpose the way creation gives us a purpose. So that's fine. Like that's not a crazy answer. You could have that answer to Aristotle's theory. And that would be a sort of reason to reject the theory. So here's the maybe yes answer, which is of course also maybe no. So some people think you can actually save the teleology, save the idea that humans have a sort of purpose or have a sort of goal or have a certain way that they should be without all the Aristotelian metaphysics and also without any sort of religious stuff. How do you do this? Well, if you think about it, we still, even after Darwin, have some, as we put it, teleological thoughts uh, that we think apply in the biological realm. So if you look at how biologists work, it's not crazy sometimes to say that the heart is sort of supposed to pump blood, and it's a defective heart if it doesn't pump blood very well, or if something's stopping it from pumping blood. Uh, the sort of the muscles in this part of my, well, I guess it's actually the tendon. I don't know, this tendon, can you see it? Yeah, this, this tendon is supposed to move this finger. If this tendon doesn't move this finger, there's something wrong with this tendon. It's, it's like a bad tendon. 
if it's not able to move the finger. The lungs are supposed to take in oxygen and put out carbon dioxide. If your lungs are not doing that very well, you have bad lungs. You can have better lungs or worse lungs. There's better hearts and worse hearts, better spleens and worse spleens, things like that. So you might think, look, the idea of purposes for body parts still sort of works even after evolution. Of course, the heart wasn't designed to pump blood. You know, it just evolved that way. But now that we have hearts, that's what they're for. And you might think there's a way of rescuing sort of purpose for humans the same sort of way. You, we can look at the sorts of creatures that were created out of evolution and maybe say there is a purpose to human life in virtue of the sorts of things that we are. Just like the purpose of the heart is to pump blood in virtue of the sort of thing that it is. Uh, the purpose of a human is, I don't know, activity of the soul in accordance with reason, because we're rational creatures, something like that. So what exactly that looks like, it depends on the theory, but there are a lot of what we call, uh, oh, that didn't work, neo-Aristotelian theories of ethics, which are sort of what they sound like. They're sort of new versions of Aristotle's essay, ethics, which are very similar to Aristotle, but without the crummy metaphysics. And if you're interested, we can read some of these. So one of the topics we can vote on in the class is sort of advanced virtue ethics. And Martha Nussbaum, for instance, is a neo-Aristotelian. And she, so she prevent, presents a theory like this. So this would be a, the idea that, look, maybe this teleology stuff isn't so bad. We can save it even after Darwin. And the third option is, no, I didn't waste your time because, look, Aristotle's virtue ethics, of course, it's based on this stuff. It's based on the idea of eudaimonia and there being a purpose to human life. But some people think you can actually get rid of most of that stuff and keep a lot of the rest of the Aristotelian virtue ethics. So take all the stuff he says about virtue. I mean, maybe not all of it, but take like his general approach to virtue and his general thoughts on this topic and maybe his general approach to ethics, which is look at what people say and sort of compile it all and figure out what makes sense. Can I do that even if I don't think humans have a purpose? And some people think, yeah, you know, Aristotle says interesting things about generosity and interesting things about courage and blah, blah, blah. And we don't need all the stuff based on the metaphysics. So look, you don't have to throw all of Aristotle in the trash. You just have to throw the bad parts in the trash. And it turns out the bad parts are just the metaphysics, which we're not interested in. We're interested in the ethics, the virtue ethics, and we can keep that. So maybe, no, I didn't waste your time. And so you think, oh, okay, that's all very well and good, whatever. But I'm actually worried about the elitism. Uh, that seemed to be objectionable. And so did I waste your time because I had you read a guy who's just sort of obviously wrong because he's very elitist? So one answer is yes. So, I mean, again, this wouldn't be a crazy reason to throw Aristotle in the trash. You might say, no, I just don't like an ethical system like this. I want a more egalitarian ethical system, one that's not so judgy. Basically, I want it to be the case that everybody can be good, not just people who are raised right uh, can be good. I want it to be the case that you don't need to have resources to be a good person. You don't need to be uh, habituated very well. And, you know, goodness should not be hard to achieve, things like this. So yeah, you could say that. There's nothing wrong with that. Kant, for instance, has a theory like this. Kant has zero elitism in his theory. Goodness is equally accessible to all rational beings at all times. So you wouldn't be crazy to sort of object to Aristotle. But there is also a case for no. There is a case for sort of having an elitist kind of ethics like this. And you might be thinking, well, how, how is that possible? And so here's the way to think about this. So look, Aristotle is coming at this from the idea of, look, we are human beings. That's the sort of thing that we are. And just like anything else in the world, a human being can be a good human being or a bad human being. We can evaluate human beings as good or bad the way you can evaluate a car as good or bad. Some cars are pieces of junk. Some cars are very good cars. You can evaluate uh, colleges and universities like this. Some universities are great. Some universities are terrible. You can evaluate teachers like this. Some of your professors are great. Some of your professors are not so great. And look, you can do this for lots of stuff, why can't you do it for humans? Some humans are good humans, and some humans are not good humans. And this is good in a very comp comprehensive sense, very wide-ranging sense. So Aristotle's got a lot of virtues, and in fact, humanity, human life is more than just the virtues. He thinks, you know, to have a good life, and so I say humans, but really it should be humans 
And human lives really is what we're evaluating. Is a life good or bad? Did you lead a good life? Did you lead a bad life? And he thinks, look, we can evaluate lives like this. If all your children die and all your plans are frustrated and everybody hates you, your life went badly. And if all your children flourish and all your plans go well and you succeed in all your endeavors, your life went well. Uh, you had a good life rather than a bad life. And he thinks, look, we can just talk about this. And I'm not talking in a very narrow sense. I, Aristotle, about like, did you do the right thing at that moment? Or are you a good person in terms of following moral rules? No, I'm talking about good in a very comprehensive, capacious sense. Just good in the sense that we talk about good cars. Is a good car morally good? No, I mean, that's not what cars are about. Is a good knife morally good? Is a good teacher morally good? Well, maybe a good teacher is partially morally good. Moral goodness is part of being a good teacher. If they give an F to students they don't like, they would be a bad teacher. So it's not like morality is irrelevant to being a good teacher, but it's not the only thing there is. There's a lot to being a good teacher, uh, being uh, giving helpful feedback, assigning useful readings, things like that. That's part of being a good teacher. It has nothing to do with morality. And so Aristotle's sort of morality, his ethics, is sort of broader than what we often think about morality and ethics. He says, look, being a good or bad person is not just about like doing the right thing in some particular moment. It's about doing the right thing for the right reasons, feeling the right way about it, uh, not having to sort of force yourself, but to just be happy about doing it. That's good. And I don't mean morally good in a narrow sense. I'm not talking about that. I just mean good generally. Like what's the best kind of person? It's somebody who just loves doing good stuff and helping other people and being nice to people. That's just what a good person is. So look, we can just judge people like this. Some people are good. They're like just great people. They go out and they make the world better. Some people are not as good. They sort of go out and they make the world worse or they try to make the world better, but they just fail at it all the time because they can't get over their like desires and addictions and stuff. And Aristotle thinks, look, this is just a reasonable way to think about things. Some people are better and some people are worse. It's just the way the world works. Would it be better if everybody were great? Yes, of course, but that's <laughs> not how it is. Some people are better and some people are worse. So in other words, he has good in a very capacious sense, not better or worse in a sort of very narrow moral sense, but just look, some people always do the right thing and they feel wonderful about it and some people just never do the right thing and they feel great about never doing it or they never do the right thing because they can't get themselves to do it they can't force them and it's just better to be the sort of person who just always does the right thing and feels great about it that would be the best kind of human to be it's something to aspire to it's something to teach your children to live up to so does this get us a kind of elitist ethics i mean yes there's just like better people and worse people but the thought is I, I don't know, it's not like necessarily a terrible way to think about the world, that there are better people and worse people. To some extent, you may already think like this. You may look at someone and think, I don't want to be like that because that is a bad way to be. And you may look at someone and say, I wish I were like that. That seems like a better way to be. And you're judging people the way Aristotle is judging people. You're saying there are some ways of being a better person and ways of being a worse person. I'm not saying like you, you must endorse Aristotle. Of course, you can still have this problem with him. He might be wrong about everything. We're about to read Kant, who thinks Aristotle is wrong about everything. Then we'll read Mill, who thinks Aristotle is wrong about everything. So I'm not trying to convert you or something. I just want to sort of give him the best uh, representation that he can get. And the thought is, look, of course, there are reasons to worry about this kind of thing. But the idea that you need to be brought up well and it's very important to bring up our children well, or else they're going to become bad people rather than good people, and we want them to be good people. That's not an insane view, is the thought. So uh, did I waste your time? The answer is still potentially yes in both cases, uh, but hopefully I've sort of explored why the answer might be, potentially at least, uh, no.